Uh, the song's called Mound of Clay by Charlie Feathers. It's a great freaking song. It's also a lost song. Like found. Like the the album was. It never was like it never was like put out. I think. That's cool. All right, give it a little clap, clap. All right, guys, we're here with probably the most anticipated guest we've had this whole time. Andrew, what's your middle name? Lee. Andrew Lee Sink. Sink. My my arch junior. (laughs) Was your dad's name Andrew Lee Sink for real? Yep. I didn't know that. Same name. Does he go by Andy? He does go by Andy. Oh, um, such I a do not. good nickname. It's such. I feel like that name kind of calls for it, you know. Yeah, you have to be an Andy. Mm. Do you think that you're an Andy? No. What is? An what do you think it takes to be an Andy? <laughs> That's a good question. And then the other, the other end, the other shortening is Drew. I think I like Drew better. I yeah. think I could peg you as a Drew before I could peg you as an Andy. Definitely. I just, I have a nephew now, and I'm Uncle Drew. Wow. Mm. Do you know who else is Uncle Drew? Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, one of the best YouTube. The movie was terrible, but the YouTube videos were awesome. Yep. Do you have a special so, uh, affinity for it now? Mm-mm. Okay. I've actually never seen it. Oh, wow. Never mind then. Okay. So what do you got for me? <laughs> and have you explained why we're enemies? I haven't. I've made brief mention, I think, in another episode of, of you. So mm. for, for the listeners, um, Andrew and I are nemesises. We um, found, a, found a hatred for one another in college. We're from rival, rival fraternities. Um, and the deepest rivalry. There might be other fraternities on campus, but I only acknowledge two of them, and I'm in one, and you're in the other. Yep. Um, we we found competition in the social circles. Mm-hmm. Um, we've we've both insulted one another's families. Mm. Yep. And we we sort of found ourselves even in post grad being competitors at. Um, <laughs> At other insurance agencies, fighting for, fighting for. The to same, be clear, same things. <laughs> our friendships teams. really started by randomly flicking each other off, saying mean stuff to each other. It was like this big bit. My favorite, my favorite Which I love was bits. a bit. Yeah, great bit. I didn't know you. I commit to the bit. I didn't know you, and my favorite thing was I would walk up to like a group of people on campus somewhere, and you would like stand, you would step in front of me to exclude me from the social (laughs) circle, and that was one of my favorite things that you did. I was like, yeah, that is hilarious. Wow, actually, very self-aware, very aware of the social setting. Mm. I think before we go on anymore, I think Andrew needs to tell us what we need to know about him. That's yeah. I, I was giving a little bit of setup for. Not necessarily what do we need to know about you. What do our listeners need to know about you? Why are you here? Who are you? Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say some random stuff about me, and hopefully that paints a picture. Okay. I listen to Morgan Wallen. I feel like that's telling. So okay. One artist on Spotify. Right? Wow. It's Who is that? It's just not even worth getting into. Okay. Is it you Morgan, would hate him. That's all you need to know. Is it Mor- I, I would hate him. That's all I need. <laughs> okay. Is it Morgan Wallen or Morgan Whalen? Both. Mm. No, actually, I'm thinking of Whalen Jennings. Mm. That's okay, a missed so opportunity. Morgan Wallen. He could have named himself Whalen something. Um, like I said, I'm someone who commits to the bit. Yeah. Mm. I love random jokes. You got to ask a better question than tell us about yourself. Mm. Well, I did ask a better question. I said, what do we need to know about you? And you have said mm. that you like, uh, you commit to the questions. bit. You love trivia questions. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, what is the top, like the most popular Christmas song of all time <laughs> based upon um, what were the statistics? This is a trivia question I asked Stephen yesterday. 
What is the best selling Christmas best selling. song of all time? Wow. Copies sold. Copies sold. Do you have any Myers. guesses, Myers? If the, hey, this is gonna be crazy if he gets it. It's not it's not what you think it's it'll be, the, but you're it's not, not the Mariah Carey song. No, no, it's not what you think it'll be, but you're not gonna be surprised when you figure out. I'm not gonna think about it that it's long because uh, I don't guesses. think I would get out. there. One guess, go. Um I can't think of I can't even think of any titles to be honest with. Is it like <laughs> is it one of the Nat didn't Nat King Cole? Yeah, okay, there it is. Uh it is it is guy. Nat King Cole adjacent. It is by Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. Do you I know what Crosby. song it's gonna be? I don't. I I, mm. do, I also don't listen to a ton of Christmas music, so it's Scrooge alert. You know, it's crazy. This might be a good time to introduce our producer, Annie. Annie Strawn. Annie. Straight from Raleigh, North Carolina. And when I say Raleigh, I mean Raleigh. She lives in downtown. Wow. In uh, Boylan Heights. Isn't that the name of the neighborhood? Boylan Heights, North Carolina. She also is a Scrooge. She doesn't like Christmas. I love Christmas, <laughs> but I don't really like Christmas music that much. Well, to answer the question that I asked, oh yeah, the that best-selling one. Best-selling Christmas song of all time is "White Christmas." Mm. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby, "White Christmas." Bing Crosby yep. is. I'm fantastic. dreaming of White Christmas. Mm. That makes sense. I had a White Christmas once. It, it snowed here one time. You remember that? It was Never. like when was, we were young. It was awesome. Me and Andrew are both from Birmingham. We wow. are from Birmingham, wow. but we had very different experiences. <laughs> one on Speaking one of, side of the mountain, one on the other. I would actually love to talk about. It. I want to. I want to. I want to break this down with you. Yeah, let's hear it. Because I do think that a fair amount of our listeners are going to be Birmingham people or Birmingham adjacent people. Andrew went to Mountain Brook High School. Yep. What is Mountain Brook known for? Mountain Brook is. First of all, I loved Mountain Brook High School. Go Spartans. Go Spartans. Mountain Brook's known for being the villain, it feels like, wow. over mm. the mountain. Wow. It's, uh, it's a great school. It's a very affluent community. And so it's just everybody's rival. Mm. That's a good way of putting it. Um, it is the most affluent community in Birmingham. It that is. was what I was looking for you to. In, I, I didn't want to. In fact, I believe it, people love pointing that out, especially Vestavia, which is the second most. Well, correct me community. if I'm wrong. I think Mountain Brook is the most affluent neighborhood in Alabama. Well, yes. yeah, I think Birmingham probably holds the top ten spots. People yeah, in Madi would it some Madison, some Madison, Huntsville people there are, are probably some, there are some, mad at us yeah, right there's now. There's some money in Mobile and there's some money in Huntsville, Huntsville but yeah. but. Mountain Brook takes, takes yeah. the cake. Yeah, Vestavia yeah. legitimately might be two. This Homewood might be Vestavia three. Vestavia is yeah. legitimately the number two. So Where do you think Gardendale is on that list? <laughs> what do you think Gardendale is on that list? <laughs> probably like 55th. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> I mean, down. It's probably not like near last. I actually, like, saw, I saw a sign in, in Gardendale the other day. It said the population was 11,000, which I don't think is accurate. I think it's an old sign on an old building. Yeah, I think it's probably a lot bigger than that nowadays. But yeah. yeah, but whatever it's the, still not. Whatever Alabama was making population signs. Yeah. But I it's saw still something not huge. that said Bessemer was, had the highest crime rate in the United States. Wow. Yeah. But it's also a smaller... How many people do you think live in Bessemer? Producer Annie. It's 26,000. Wait. That's my guess. That's your guess? Or you know that? Uh, I, I feel like I know that. I mean, My guess is going to be say, 16. I was going to say 50. I was going way high. 50? Yeah. Wow. Population of Bessemer, Alabama, Annie. What do we got? She's on the way. We're I'm sure. drinking a LaCroix right now, and I'm burping. Yeah. I'm having a, I might put it in the mic in a second. I'm sorry. 24. 24. Wow. Wow. Okay, I was off. And, he, and he's right. So I, I think we talked about this last night at dinner as well. I think that s since, you know, say in Chicago, there's a hundred murders a month or something like that. I don't know if that's the right answer, but that might, that's my guess. But since there's like 12 million people that live in Chicago, not that much, but in exactly. Bessemer, there's like four murders a month, 
but there's only 24,000 people that live there. So, so it's per yeah, capita. So the percentage is... Per capita? So that's probably the right. Delta, the delta is way higher. Econ guy. What is that? He's an econ guy. It's, it's a statistics term. The delta? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the Mississippi delta. No, like no, the no. area it's of like, Mississippi. I don't remember like exactly swamp. what a delta is. I learned about it in data analytics. It's, it's an like airline. The, I forgot to. It's like the... It's you know it's kind of like it's saying fascinating. The per, ca- per capita like Delta Airlines big thing also Delta is like a company that makes a bunch of like fixtures like like they make like lighting fixtures and shower like heads and stuff like that I don't understand how there's not like some sort of copyright infringement right there like those are two like yeah. massive companies yeah you ever think about that no well and it also Delta is a letter it? yeah that's what I was about to say. So you, you know. can't really. That yeah, might you, be, you that know might be why. That that's a letter because you were in a fraternity. <laughs> yeah. Tri Delta. Is there a? Oh, yeah, that's right. My favorite sorority at Sanford, Tri Delta. Same. Mm. Wow. I think I think that. Tri Deezy. Tri Deezy. Hey, that, your wife <laughs> was a Tri Delta for one year. Yeah. Maybe not even that. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe a semester. Maybe one semester. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but okay. So you went to Mountain Brook mm-hmm. High School. You you were born there, right? Like your family's been there yep. your whole life. Neither of my parents are from Birmingham. Where are they from? My mom is from Shreveport, Louisiana. Wow, howdy. My dad's from Montgomery, and they ended up here. They both went to the University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Toll Ride. And me and my sisters grew up whole life in Birmingham. Hmm. That's fascinating. Shreveport, I'm familiar with that city for one reason really? because Gracie's fam like Gracie's family is in Austin and we have to drive through Shreveport to yep, get there. It's on the way. And like this is a cold take. That it might be the worst city I've ever been in in my life. Yeah, it's no one stays there. It is. There's no reason to. My grandmother's still there and we're trying to get her to leave it's it is like the worst roads i've ever driven on in my entire like existence it's kind of crazy there there's not much there's there. a there's ginormous a casino. casino that's what i was about to yeah, say horseshoe casino yeah and there's a bowl game there and that would be like you know people go to birmingham bowl that stinks right but at least like i don't know at it's a nice stadium but like shreveport stadium genuinely is garbage it's it's like um how, how do you explain it it's not like in downtown there's not really a downtown it's but it's rusty. not in downtown it's rusty but it's like in a suburb like right beside the interstate and it's like birmingham's is right beside the interstate too but it's like a junction in downtown so i feel like it's like in the middle of downtown so it's What's different the bowl game called the camping world bowl game the one in treeport i had i don't know Maybe something like that stadium camping world stadium yeah i'll go camping world or Camping World's the one in Orlando. I don't know. I don't I'm probably know. wrong. Anyways, so Shreveport, Montgomery, come, they get married at Alabama. Or, yeah, they met at You Alabama. know what I mean. Yeah. Got married, moved to Birmingham. Wow. Okay, so Myers, when you came to Birmingham, and what was your first, like from Jackson, and then, so you grew up in Jackson, come to Sanford. It was just Homewood right beside Mount Brook. What was the first time that you remember going to Mount Brook, and what were your thoughts? I remember, I think the earliest Mountain Brook memory I have is I went with, it must have been like a student government thing, because I remember doing some stuff with SGA, and I remember going to the Taco like Mall. your freshman year? Yeah. I was in oh, like a freshman so freshman forum, I think is what it was called, and I went to the Taco Mama in Crestline. Mm. The original it, one, right? It might be. It might be. Yeah, I think uh, that sounds that sounds right. Okay, it's been there but I time. went there, and then I remember going. There's that intersection. I don't remember the names of the roads, but one spits out to what is it, Montclair? Yeah, and one takes you back around past the Country Club. Yeah, back through Mountain Brook even more yep. towards English Village and um, Country Club Road. There's a really, really big house on that corner, mm-hmm. and it has a huge front yard. Tons of plants. And then, like, the, the driveway that goes up and then goes through the arch yeah. into the, you know, garages in the back. And I remember seeing that house and being like, holy cow, that's a huge house. Mm. And that's the that's first thing I remember about Mountain Brook. This is definitely, like, an annoying question 
and you've probably been asked this before as a as a spart as the spartan that you are what is the biggest house you went to while living in mountain brook mm. and who was it that's a good question i gotta think there was a house there's a place called shook hill circle i was wondering if it was going to be back there is that the Some house that you showed me on Google Maps? There's almost not the houses, the lots that they're on. The yeah, houses huge. back there, if you get on Zillow, they're 10, huge. 10,000 square feet, 13,000 wow. yeah, square so feet, 11,000 square feet. Those, I actually, I didn't go to, into those, but they're the biggest. Mm. I, there are, I don't know who lives there. The, I like looking at big houses. I like looking at houses. So I'm interested in architecture and stuff like that. And, and so cool. I've I've driven around. Yeah, I'm really cool. So a lot of places that I go, I've driven around <laughs> neighborhoods with like cool looking houses. Those are yeah. some of the biggest houses I've ever seen. They're crazy. Yeah, mm. no, they're huge. Well, okay, so one question that me and Myers were talking about some podcasts the other day. This honestly might have been one of the times we referenced you. But we were like literally curious, like when the houses get like unbelievable there, like. I'm talking like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars. Who are those people? Like, what do they do? Like, did you have any friends in high school? They were like the president of freaking like Amazon or some <laughs> crap. Like, see, no, that's that's the top, and I don't know. I mean, I knew some very wealthy people, but there's also a lot of old people that live yeah. there. People in yeah. their seventies, no idea who they are. I guess that's true. Yeah, they're kind of just like sneaky and secret and people. People like that. that and honestly, I knew I knew one person. I didn't know them directly, but my college pastor um, from Mountain Brook, he was like house sitting somewhere one time, and I went over there to talk with him at that house. And it was in Mountain Brook. It was pretty nice. It was right outside of Mountain Brook Village. And he said the 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 older couple that lived there used to own the Birmingham News. Like newspaper, wow. and Mr. They, and Mrs. They, News. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. The newspaper news family, and they sold the newspaper, <laughs> and then they just had wow. A house in Mountain Brook. They sold the newspaper. <laughs> I hope they sold a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. They sold one newspaper for like ten million dollars. Wow, <laughs> retired. <laughs> I remember. I remember one time, like my dad, so. Wendy, who work your coworker, yeah. Wendy's husband used to work at the Birmingham News before they like downsized and made it into like a tech only. But literally, what he did was he would, I think, if I'm remember, remembering correctly, he would make like the screen print, like metal things mm. where the ink would go, and they would like press it into yeah. the papers. And we have the like he gave it to us. We have the metal print for like the 2009. Uh, Rose Bowl national championship, like the wow. Alabama news. That's so cool. pretty cool. That I don't know cool. something random about Birmingham news, but um, anyways, so Mountain Brook though, I remember uh, I've told this to Myers before, but my English teacher, and I think it's my junior year of high school. I can't remember her name. I know I could know exactly what she looks like though. It's like right or something like that. But anyway, she lived in Mountain Brook and her, but she lived in like a condo that she rented but she just wanted to live in Mount Brook so her daughter could go to Mount Brook High School. Yeah. And she started dating. I might have told this to you before, but she started dating this guy. And then they would like, they like started asking her like to go on these family trips with them, like to Vail and like Europe and all these things. And then she realized that her dad owned Kodak. Whoa. What? Yeah. And her dad never was in Birmingham, but they lived in Mountain Brook though. Because it was like a nice, quiet little town. But he was always wow. traveling like charter jets to wherever he was going. That's crazy. But yeah, that's, that's nice. the camera company. Crazy. Huge company. Massive. But I also feel Publicly like if, traded. <laughs> yeah, if there is a super rich family, they probably are going to like either Altamont or like some bougie high school or they're going to like some charter school in like England. Or I don't yeah. know. Like they're probably not even Boarding staying in Birmingham. somewhere. I never really thought about that either. So that's probably why we don't know any of these people because they don't, you get so rich that they're not even involved in Birmingham at yeah. all, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's that's another level, like sending yeah. them overseas and stuff. But, yeah. But I mean, the public schools over the mountain were terrific and that's why a lot of people moved there. Yeah. What do you think makes Mountain Brook a terrific school? 
Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, what what made it terrific for you? No, we know like statistically ACT scores, but for you yeah. personally, I mean the teachers were great. There's just a huge emphasis on getting you prepared for college. The athletics were great. Obviously, there's great facilities. I don't know what makes a good school. Mm. Yeah, I wonder. That's Mars, what do you think? What makes a bad school mm. besides teachers? I think the goal of school should be to teach people how to learn and how to be independent and critical thinkers. Mm. I would say one good thing about Mountain Brook is it's, it's got an entrepreneurial spirit mm. to it. Okay. I think that's the independent and critical thinker part that I'm referring yeah. to. And despite the reputation, I mean, it's a very hard, people are want to be successful. Mm-hmm. So yeah. all the people I was friends with, extraordinarily hard workers. I think and all, like all those, are, are those are good elite. things, I yeah. think. Yeah. As, aspirational, ambitious. I yep. think those are those good are some things pros. to be. Yeah. I I had a very interesting high school experience. Yeah, tell me about yours. And one thing that I didn't understand was, like, I grew very fond of uh, the things that are, were associated with, like, it being, like, a super negative, like, environment. Like, I grew, like, whenever there was fights, it was, like, a really fun thing. Like, it was, fights like, great. it was, like, planned. Like, everybody, it got to a point, like, in high school, like, if you were going to fight somebody you knew like when and where it was going to happen. And I remember teachers like literally if they, if they caught wind of it, it was like the world was like ending. Like they would, they like could not understand why anyone would ever get in a fight. But I remember being like thinking it was just like dominance. You have to prove that you're worth something. Yeah. And (laughs) it wasn't like people are like lashing out and like stabbing people. It was like, Oh, I'm mad at this person. We're going to fight. And I, that's pretty like Roman, you know? You David you ever... David dissed me on Snapchat, so like cafeteria oh, yeah. five okay. PM. It's yeah, going. It was down. always there was this one parking lot behind Chick fil A. That was always where they fought. Did you ever get mad enough to want to punch someone? Get uh, Did you ever get in a physical altercation in high school? No. I never did. Um like I don't know. I'm not like a like I wasn't ever in that in that sort of environment. Like whenever I was in high school or sorry, middle school, PE. Like I remember sixth grade was like really tough because there was a bunch of middle schools. Like similarly to Mountain Brook, I think there's a bunch of middle schools, and then like all the middle schools, or sorry, there's a bunch of elementary schools, and then in sixth grade, all the middle schools, like sorry, all the elementary schoolers came to one middle school. Yeah, everybody's. And I remember thinking, because I went from Gardendale where I was, like, one of the best athletes, and I came from a, a city where, like, sports was all, like, sports was the identity kind of thing. Like, that was, like, the, the most cool thing to do. And uh, so, anyways, I remember getting into sixth grade and really struggling with the fact that, like, I was nowhere near the best. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, we just had... We had a lot of students who came from like really athletic backgrounds and they were just freaking athletic as heck and they k- killed me. But yeah, so man, uh, you're a competitive guy. I am a competitive guy. I think it's because like me and Annie were just talking about this earlier. Like, I think it's because like I grew up in an environment where like if you were good at sports, you were giving, you were given more, um, responsibility and like just stature and like a lot of stuff. Like in all other parts of the school, like if you were a good athlete, then you were like, it's the I way don't you even obtain know. status. Status, yeah, yeah, whatever you want to call that. There's probably like a super philosophical way of explaining what I just explained, but I don't. I think know. it is. I think it is to talk about status because status, you know, there's different yeah. things that attribute status in different sort of cultures and societies, and often in the South, yeah, athletic ability as a child. For not whatever, for enough. no reason. Like, that doesn't, <laughs> that's not correlative to... Yeah, it doesn't translate as an adult unless you are literally a professional yeah. sports Yeah, it's crazy how much person. it ceases to matter. Yeah. yeah. And, like, my nephew was born, and as soon as he, they told us he was going to be a boy, me and my dad, 
my brother-in-law, we all started talking about what sports he was going to play. Yeah. I like wonder what that is. Because uh, to, to an extent, it is valid that, like, if you as a child grow up and are disciplined in sports, you can become a professional athlete. And I almost yeah. wonder, like, is that everyone, like, in the South, is that everyone's first desire and then like when that doesn't pan out then you try and figure something else out like when you are 17 and you realize oh i'm not gonna be like major league baseball so i guess i should mm. go to college and like you know i wonder what that thought process is I honestly like i remember living in washington state that summer and what this dude was from santa cruz california and grew up like surfing and skating and like all like beautiful nature all around him and i remember him genuinely asking me he was like what do y'all do like talking about Alabama, yeah. mm. and I, I don't, I, I don't want to go down that road of just like roasting how pretentious that guy was because he definitely was in that moment. But I remember telling him like, I genuinely think that's why we're so much better at sports than everybody else, mm. and people from the Midwest too. If you think about it, like Alabama, Michigan, Texas, and well, I guess uh, ironically enough, Washington is in the playoff, but it's because no one from Washington is on that team. There. Yeah, but like Michigan and Alabama are well, uh, Michigan's a beautiful state if you've been there. Alabama's a beautiful state if you've been here. But there's like stereotypically associated with like like farmland and Detroit, which are just like terrible places, yeah. you know? So anyways, it's just like it, I, I feel like we I think genuinely games are are fun here because that's what sports are at their core is just like an organized game. And games are fun to people who like not saying that Alabamians don't Alabamians don't have anything to do, but to a certain extent, like community involvement is huge. And one of the best ways to like get involved in the community and do something on Saturdays was like youth basketball, you know, back in like my, when my grandmother was growing up or something, but yeah. it is fascinating though. It brings like community. Yeah. It does. It brings people together. Yeah. But why like talent on like in the game is like correlated with like, influence in like whatever it was like student government or like um who uh talked at the pep rallies or like who got to like get a picture with the mayor or whatever that was it just didn't make it like that doesn't make any sense to me being fast when you were in elementary <laughs> school <laughs> directly correlates to your confidence levels mm. later on in life yeah to literally yeah. and i was fast slow kids, I yeah. was fast. I was fast until I stopped growing up, and then mm. I had to, I, I then it just plateaued. Took a humble pill because I was yeah. running. I, I ran track <laughs> and I did sprints. It's true though. And like eventually, the guys were like six four, and I was five seven, and it, my it stride work. just I couldn't I couldn't keep up. You Dude, know? What What do you think? What do you think is different about that? Now? Like, I don't know. I'm, I, Grace and I went to crafts for the first time the other day, speaking of Mount Brook, and that is like where all of the middle schoolers hang out I was at. terrorizing it. And there's a bunch of them, and they were like all playing on their phones. So I'm just like imagining that. I'm like, they probably don't oh, yeah. care at all about who's fast anymore. Yeah, because now, gosh, yeah, young kids. Yeah. I'm talking like I'm not 24 years old and use social media every day. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're on, they're comparing themselves not just to the people in their grade, but the whole earth. world. Mm. Yeah. And like Which getting is, fed stuff dude, for their age group. Brutal. Yeah, it sucks. Like you can't compare to everyone else because yeah. there is so many people that are better than you at whatever your niche thing is. And like even the people that are better than them in their grade, they're looking at the people that are better than everyone. Mm. Which... That's yeah. That sucks for them. It's also hard, just in general, as an adult. Like, uh, like yeah, uh, trying to limit that. Yeah, it's it's why people who are super niche in business, I think, can be really successful because you just have you, you get really good at one very, very, very specific thing, and then you become the expert in that. Yep. And then everyone comes to you if they're the exact customer who is there for that. If that makes sense. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's that's how you start. And then eventually, if you're really good at that, you can start to expand your reach. But you got to find your niche first and focus on them yeah, first. Yeah, it's hard to 
choose something when so much is bombarded into your brain. There's almost decision paralysis for what you are going to do with your life, mm. who you're going to be. What made you choose to major in business? And what, what, what was your specific major? Was it finance? I majored in finance. Okay. I, I was always interested in how money worked. Yeah. Stock market. Yeah. Hey, they say money estate. talk. What's your conversation? Money talks. Can't and uh, so, and I've also, you know, I've always felt like I wanted to do something entrepreneurial one day. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to me. And initially, and I still have a large interest in real estate. That's what I grew up around. That's what my dad does. Now I'm in insurance. Um, it's just adja- adjacent. It's yeah. financial services, but you deal a lot in real estate. And they, you know, eventually want me to specialize in real estate companies, talking to them, because that's what I know how to talk about. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I was just a cliche business student. I didn't know what I want to do. Still don't. But I kind of like being that way. But I'm very there's an ad, There's minded. an adventure to the unknown. Yeah. I do think that, that I just want to say that this is in this. You might have already said this, Myers. This is like a segment we wanted to add in this week was business talk. Because mm. Myers yeah. freaking loves this crap. I, yeah. it's not like I don't care about it, but I'm close. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Like some of the things that I care the most about, Stephen is just like, okay. When you think yeah. of business, though, what do you? That's such a general term. Mm. What do you think? Okay, this is what I think when I think of business. Um, I, the most successful friends I have, like in terms of business, are freaking miserable. That's what I think of when I think of like when I think of like people who work in business. What I when I think of like what people actually like yearn for when they're into business is like creativity and um, organization. And I literally I'm not get, like, but also I got a fascination with it too. Like I watched the Microsoft Excel World Championships. Would, did y'all know that that was a thing? I I've heard of it. Did actually, know that was a thing. I watched it on YouTube the other day. It's fascinating. But also I'm like. It's just so it's it's in, it's insane what people can do, and honestly, like yeah, I, I've sat with like my there's this old guy named Ron I'm friends with. I'm not even gonna try to explain what, how I know him, but he's like made a money off a bunch of money off the stock market because he like tracks these like dips, um, which you'll probably know what that means. I, he explained it to me, but it's like a if something goes into the, like, I think it's like the second standard deviation or third standard deviation off of like its average at this point during this time and this setting, yada, yada, it's the time to buy. And he bought a bunch of carnivals cruise during COVID and he's made like boats of, <laughs> no pun wow, that's a good wow. one. Wow. How about that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. The, but he's made boatloads of money off of it because of it. And then, uh, so anyways, like I, I feel like I have like fascination of it. But also, like, like when it comes to, like, finance bros are just such a thing now. Yeah. And those guys just, like, they're, like, morning routine people. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I budget and, like, I take really good care of my money. But it, to me, like, when you're – this is going to get deep. When your calling becomes, like, logical and not, like, personal, if that makes any sense – you're going down like a bad, a bad path. Yeah. Um, and, and I think people who, who definitely associate their identity with like career, that's a, that's a bad thing to associate your identity with. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like. I'll say this to add to your point. The yeah. people that you see build these massive companies yeah. from the ground up and become billionaires. Yeah. I mean, this is a generalized statement. Yeah. All those people are psychos. Yeah. And they have to be. Yeah. To, there, there's a certain type of person that can become a billionaire. And yeah. They're, they're very obsessive. Yeah, exactly. Like almost like disorder-esque in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Like, but also like. That's that's why you see someone like Elon Musk whose personal life is a disaster. All of them. I mean. Yeah. But like, but like he f- he's running Tesla. He's running X. He, like he's. Yeah. That's who they financially are. Financially. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. It's interesting to me like. For me, like if you want to talk business, 
my question is like, um, I guess this really only applies to believers, but or to like Christians. But if if I ask you a question like, is there going to be currency in heaven? Like you realize through that conversation, ten typically where that conversation leads is like currency in general is a product of bad, like of evil. Like the fact that we have to have another means of like proof that like this is worth this versus this is worth that. Cause like, you know, I think like a small town, like the first ever town that ever existed, small town. If I like, you know, had a supply of wood at my house, but you lived on no wood, but you had wheat, you should think that like your wheat could easily trade for my wood. But say like, I got flour from somebody else, then I don't need it, but you need wood. So it's like, okay, you got to give me something like that's like a, instead I should just like care for you. You should care for me. It, that, that's like well, an oversimplification, well, but I do think that accruing wealth to a certain extent, I think is like making up for control, but like control of what, like I don't, especially if you're sacrificing personal life. Cause for me, I'm like your wife, your kids, your family, and all of those things, in my opinion, or like why we're on earth is like the familial structure. But I also understand that that's like difficult, difficult for some people to wrap their heads around because of how terrible the familial structure is statistically these days. So I don't know. It's hard for me to like get into this. Also, the reason I'm talking about this right now is because I see more people in the finance realm associate identity with career than any other. It almost, it seems like every other industry, you have to like prove why it's like a calling versus like what the business people are doing. If that makes sense. Like social workers have to be like, oh yeah, I just like really love caring for, or like teachers are like, oh, this is a calling. It's like, maybe he like, they're just freaking normal and the finance people are, I don't know. That this is, this is, here's my, that I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just kind of ranted. No, it's okay. <laughs> we needed to, we needed to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so from someone who's not into business, how would y'all rebuttal? Well, I'll say I am into business and, before you, ahead, you before you go further what do you think business is okay good question because i kind of i think we need to define our terms a little bit look at it differently and i also think the w- money in itself you think about how important it is in your life mm. regardless yeah unfortunately it is like you started going to school at a young age for what reason? To go to college so that you could do something sure. to graduate. Not everybody does, obviously, but yeah. it's it's a huge deal. Yeah. When I think of business and I think of creating wealth, yeah. It's more of like you're creating a resource. Mm-hmm. And whatever you do with that, that's what matters. Yeah. And it's just, it's interesting to me how that can happen. Yeah. Like there's so many different avenues to make money and there's so many different things you can do with money. Yeah. To be like, I want to make a lot of money. I would never sacrifice any relationship that I have to do so, but it's interesting to me that it's possible. Yeah. Mm. And the, yeah. That's a I cool mean, way of putting it. I was uh, like, uh, I was talking to a friend today and he is an anti bank. It's like, uh, I understood that from this conversation. But he was saying that he was thinking about taking out a home equity so that he could put more of his like savings into renovation. And instead he was like, he was like, yeah, the bank just wants collateral so they can own it, not me. And I was like, that's not why the bank loans money. The, the bank yeah. loans money because we can't, it's, it's at least originally the bank did that out of like kindness because everyone could like pool money together. Well, the bank makes money by loaning out money. That's what interest is. Yeah. And so, I, so here's what I see business as business to me is, um, you're solving someone's problem in exchange for currency. And currency is a mediating tool so that if you have wood and I have wheat Mm -hmm. and I want your wood, but you don't want my wheat, I can still get your wood from you 
by exchanging you something else that you can take to Andrew. Yeah. And you can go say, hey, Andrew, you might not want my wood that I can trade you for your blanket, but I still need to get a blanket because I'm cold. And so here's, here's, here's some paper that is backed by something that we call money. And so if I take some money, give it to you, you can give me a blanket and you don't have to take my wood. That's okay. Cause I gave you some money. Mm. So it's a mediation tool. Yeah. So then business that, that, that is a business transaction really. Yeah. So you want the service of a blanket cause you're cold. Yeah. You need the product of a blanket cause you're cold. Mm-hmm. And so you need to buy that from him with money. Mm. So business in itself is not a bad thing. Yeah. If you money is not a bad thing, but if you make any of those things more important than other things that are important, it can become a bad thing. It's the idolization yeah. of money. It's the idolization yeah, of wealth accruing. Greed. It's the idolization of a business. If you find yeah. all of your identity in your business, that can become a bad thing. Yeah, and like maintaining a lifestyle and status with your money and yeah. thinking that you're you would have to provide that for your family this extremely yeah. luxurious lifestyle that's super comfortable mm-hmm. that is dangerous and it's easy to justify too that you're you know you're giving your family what you never had or something like that yeah but yeah and another thing is you know sometimes people under the guise of being frugal mm-hmm. hang on to their money harder than someone even more successful would ever do. Yeah. Like, you know, just pinching pennies, it's not a bad thing all the time, but yeah. there are a lot of people who th- who take pride in really hanging on to their what yeah. money they do have mm-hmm. as like a good thing. Yeah. And it's just as much of an obsession with money as making a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Part, part of why I would want to accrue a lot of wealth is to be giving to others. Yeah, ridiculously like that, generous would be the most fun thing. Yeah, but I think it I think it starts now when we're 24 years old. Well, you'll never, you'll we never should start. be giving now in what ways that we can be. Because, I mean, that's, that's scriptural. He who's faithful with a little will be faithful with much or whatever it is. Like, it's the principles that you have when you're young if you stick to them, mm-hmm. you have more opportunity to be more giving and more good with those principles when you are yeah. later on in life. You know how I would define business? This is this is my defin this is my definition, and this definition is going to be a predicament. Okay, you know how when you go to a coffee shop or I don't know, like Chick Fil A or something like that, and they give you a bad cup. That that moment, like that feeling, that stinks. So obviously the main way that I've ever considered running a business is running a coffee shop. And for me, I, I think that it's so annoying that you have to like, say you're running a coffee shop. I'll I'll explain this way. Say you're running a coffee shop and you're tight on money. Okay. What are the first things that are going to go? Where's, where are you going to drop in quality in order for you to obtain more wealth otherwise? That predicament is how I would define business. And I, I hate that. I hate that the soap in the bathroom, the paper towels in the bathroom, the toilet paper in the bathroom, which are things that are like things like like things that people deeply care about the quality of in their home. But then whenever you're hosting them in your in your big just because it's called a business that like that stuff gets sacrificed. Like, oh, we don't care about your bathroom experience or whatever, but also like people take advantage of you. So don't make the bathroom like a freaking suite. You know, there's like, there's all these like different predicaments you have to find. But I also think about like, I, I, it's hard for me to think about business in like a bigger, like, cause I know that if you're like running like freaking regions or something like that, like your how you run business is like, like it's a while to me that there is like someone at regions that like in no way will ever meet the CEO, but based upon like regions trajectory of like growth, they knew they had to hire a position that's just going to like run specific sets of numbers. 
in order for like the whole thing to function. Like how they found that out blows my freaking mind. It's a machine. Yeah. It's crazy. I see business as a really, really cool puzzle that involves... You're a puzzle guy. ...people and like to me... I would never run a coffee shop if I couldn't do it with excellence. And I think what you're finding mm-hmm. is annoying about business is there's so many factors and it's really, 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 really difficult yeah. to run even a simple business with excellence. And I think mm-hmm. the people who are excellent at business are the ones who make all the money. Mm-hmm. But they there's so much time and work that it takes to make something excellent that they often end up being the same people who like sacrifice their own families yeah. to run a business in an excellent yeah. way. Yeah, and there and I would say that those types of people are so rare. And when they can like say like Jeff Bezos accrues wealth, Jeff Bezos probably is putting a lot of pressure on himself. But there's probably a lot of people who depend on him. Yeah, and whether it's self inflicted or inflicted by the other people. He's like feeling pressure from other people yeah. too. Um, and I think that, that that's like a scary motive, but I do think that for sure has to be a motive of some people. Yeah. I you went know? down a rabbit hole the other day on McDonald's. Ooh. And well, I'll start with another trivia question about McDonald's. Okay. How many pounds of French fries do you think McDonald's cooks every year worldwide? Oh, worldwide. Oh, gosh. You just made that big. I was thinking like one day. All of the French fries that they cook in a year. Pounds. Can you give me an estimate of what like one potato weighs? I'll give you two pieces of context. There are almost 40,000 McDonald's on Earth, different locations. And I think a large fry, which is the most popular item on the menu. For sure. Is like six ounces, something like that. Okay. And then... One pound is 12 ounces, right? 16. 16 ounces. Okay. I don't even want to try and do the math in yeah, my head. I mean, the math yeah. would be hard. I just want to say 25 billion pounds. 25 billion pounds. So that would mean every person on earth. Okay. 25 billion pounds. What's your guess? Uh, I... I think that that's kind of like as if like say 40,000 McDonald's definitely do um 20 pounds a day so what is that math like 400 no 800,000 pounds a day so I'll go 65 yeah so I'll go 500 million is my is gonna be my rough guess 500 million and 25 billion two massively (laughs) different guesses the correct answer is 3.29 billion pounds of French fries every Oh, year, my gosh. Which... Um, I knew it would be in the billions, which but is I, it's good. Yeah. But 3 billion pounds. Yeah. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. And wow. Then I watched the movie, The mm-hmm. Founder. It's a great um, movie. Yeah. The guy who, once again, you see, not the greatest guy, but yeah. without him, McDonald's would not be what it is today. Can I can I give one bit one little bit of pushback? Oh yeah, yeah. French fries would still exist today. Oh yeah, we we the world would keep turning. You don't need McDonald's. Fast yeah. food. But there wouldn't be forty thousand buildings feeding a percentage of the earth every day. I mean, did did this did did Mister McDonald invent fast food? Did he not? He the McDonald's brothers the drive through I think up is what with, it was uh, this system of making the food really fast and having it ready at the counter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which was revolutionary. The, how they which set is, up their kitchen. Which, so then it's not only that they have 40,000 stores that feed people all over the earth, but also paved the path oh, yeah. for dozens of other kinds of companies. Probably, if you think about small fast food chains, like hundreds of different kinds of companies and billions and billions, probably trillions and trillions of dollars. Oh yeah, that are made by other people and other business like that's I was that's thinking, revolutionary. I was thinking about this today. Yeah, have you ever do you eat kava ever? C A V A. Yeah. 
uh, whenever Kava was only in Atlanta, like I, I, it was probably somewhere else before that. It started but, in Seattle. Um, like whenever it was in the Southeast, it was only in Atlanta first. Yeah. And I had it in Atlanta and it was unbelievably good. And now that they're like everywhere, Birmingham's locations are trash. I kind of stopped eating. Yeah. I, I was, was like, really I, bummed about that. So however they're doing, if, if Mr. Kava is listening, your restaurants are dropping in quality fast. I listened to the podcast, um, How I Built This. And For Kava? I interviewed the Kava guys. Wow. Um, they bought Zoe's Kitchen. Is that what Zoe's Kitchen is now? And they turned them all into Kava's. They tried to, <laughs> they tried to fix... <laughs> Yeah, they tried to fix Zoe's and then figured they literally out that are in it the was old a better Zoe's. way. It was a better way for them to just turn them into Kava's, and that's why downtown Homewood is now a Kava, same spot as where the Zoe's was, and then downtown Birmingham by the Publix, the Kava used to be a Zoe's. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I had no idea. Was Zoe's a Mediterranean place? Yeah, sort of, chain. but it was weird because they it was like a Mediterranean place that also had like mac and cheese and tuna salad or something like some like chicken other salad, things. Yeah, I don't think I salad. ever ate it. Zoe's. I'll and, be honest. And they when they were trying to fix the business model, they were like, "Look, we kind of just need to like nix the whole Zoe's menu and just we know Kava works." So they switched wow. every every store to a Kava. I feel like I've been lied to. Truly, yeah. I loved it Kava. Kind of, it blew first. my mind when I learned about that. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, we've talked about business for 25 straight minutes now, so uh, we're going to move to the next segment, my favorite segment. All right. Which is Meyer Sports. So now that we've talked about business for 25 minutes, now we can talk about Meyer Sports, which is definitely, we've, we lost female listeners, I mean, ages ago. Yeah, we don't so have any, no women are listening anymore, so, so this okay. is all for the fellows. This, one's, this one is probably the least sports Meyer sports segment we've ever had. I just thought this was fascinating. Okay, so today's fun sports fact for you, Myers. I would love to hear your commentary on this afterwards. Yep. yep. Um, there is only one city in America that has all the major sports teams and that they all have the same color. Mm. I'm not going to tell you the colors because that'll give it away. But do you have a guess for what city it is? I'm gonna it's, say it, like it's pretty. These are like iconic. Well, not all of them, but some of these teams are like iconic. I think it's New York. Okay, name name uh, a few of the sports teams in New York. The Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets, which are black and white. The Yankees, which are navy and white. So no. Okay. Strike one. Boston. Okay. Start naming some Boston sports teams. Red Sox. Red Sox. Celtics or green. Celtics. <laughs> so pretty pretty polar. Nope. Blue, red, and green and white. So strike two. I'll give you one more guess and then I'll I'll relieve you of your pain. I'd actually love to hear Andrew's guess too. I'm trying to think. Uh, I love a good trivia. It has all the how many what are the, the there's baseball, football, basketball. Um I think I'm just talking about those three. Yeah, those actually, are like they have three. three sports teams: baseball, football, and hockey. Yeah, so there's no, there's no, um, there's no basketball there. There is a basketball team in the same state. I think that's probably why there's not a basketball team there. But there is a football and a baseball team in that other city in the same state as well, and a hockey team. So I don't know why there's not a basketball team there, but the other three, they are there are. Um, I'm going to say L.A. L.A. You know, that that is that was probably true not that long ago. But now that there, there's even two football teams there, they have different colors. So um, the, do you have a guess, Andrew, before I give it away? Give me the region of the country. It's in the Northeast. I should have done that. That should that would have been a good I guess. Think it in the Northeast. Um, when he's when you said hockey, I knew it had to be something. Is, up it, above. Uh, is it Pittsburgh? It is mm. Pittsburgh, oh, wow. Pennsylvania. Stuff. Yeah, Pirates, uh, Steelers, and the Penguins. And the Penguins is more of a gold, but they historically wore black and yellow. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it it goes into this whole thing about how like the Pitt family, uh, their like coat of arms. Somebody should knock on the door. I couldn't tell. Oh, nah. um, their coat of arms were black and yellow, so that's why. That's cool. Crazy man, Wiz Khalifa. Shout out. Mm. B movie. Okay, well, there's our sports segment. What do you think well, about okay, that? Okay, before we move on from the sports segment, I listened to another one. Okay. Where you talked about... Uh, was it when the, we talked about baseball? Yes. It was the, the oh, time uh, yeah. of a baseball game and the amount of... Yes, that effect, one I, I got really close on. Which was fascinating. But uh, you have for, a for an NFL, it's not necessarily a rebuttal. Okay. I am a huge, to anyone listening, I'm a huge baseball fan, but I also love oh, football. I, I thought about that. I, I actually wanted to talk to you about this. I, I forgot sports. about that right now. I love sports. I love sports history. I love nostalgia. Meyer sports is funny because I could not really care less <laughs> yeah, about that. most sports. That's why it's a great segment. Yeah. But you said mm-hmm. uh, a baseball game is like three hours and there's only... And there's only nine, nine, nine minutes, minutes and 55, 55 seconds, seconds right. of actual play. So on play. not to be a dork about it. Yeah. But uh, NFL games, on okay. average, longer than MLB. Oh, games. for sure, yeah. Mm. Uh, Ads. It's basically the same statistic. About 11 minutes of wow. the ball is actually in play. That makes sense. And uh, now NBA games That's are crazy, a actually. Which is fascinating. Well, I guess it's not that fascinating because, like, literally there's, you know, what uh, I don't know. But NBA football is just, just feels like... There's so many less football games mm-hmm. that they matter so much more mm-hmm. when you watch them. So it just feels more important. Mm. It's not... Baseball one, is... You, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, one of the things, and I, I've talked about this before, I, pl- I grew up playing soccer. I was not forced to play soccer, though. So I'd like to say there's a little bit of organic nature to this. Yeah. But, like, I love... Like, soccer's my, my, most, my most favorite soccer's sport. Soccer's super cool. Um. One thing that I'm growing to like love about it is that the clock does not stop. Mm-hmm. Like the clock, it's a, yeah. it is a running clock yeah. always. And, and it, like when the game's over, the game is over. Yeah. Like, so there's a level of energy in soccer that like literally does not exist yeah. because there's, there's just timeouts. Like, which yeah. uh, I don't know. And one thing I'm growing to, and I think this is becoming more and more prevalent because i am starting to watch basketball a little bit as we're getting into the season and i despise how people in basketball can just like once it gets in and it like down underneath like 60 seconds they like do the oh the God. three point like foul and then you have to only have two points scored and then you can because of the free throws and then like you foul the other person or you like it, that the ending of basketball games when they're close are like it's horrible excruciating like they're so so annoying so that and then i do like the fact that like baseball is like you have like an at bat and like you're done you have no th- clock they have three outs yeah well i guess they have the, the yeah the well now they have the a pitch clock pitch clock but, but no no, no clock clock yeah and the game and that's another reason why like golf and tennis i'm growing to like a lot more because like you know exactly what like you have to play every single shot like it, granted, golf's like pretty boring to those who like don't understand. Like, you have to get really into golf to like watching golf. But yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah. Back to back to the baseball thing. So, like for you, when you like giving like if if I were to prompt like a real rebuttal to that, like for me to say like that's so that sound like that is why it's so boring because I I'm not a big football fan either. Yeah. Like I would say baseball. It's in recent years it's had some problems it has to deal with it's mm-hmm. the for so long baseball was king in mm-hmm. america i mean for like a hundred years yeah it america's was pastime america's pastime and the first superstars <laughs> were all baseball players the first that's true i never heroes thought about that were all baseball players and a lot of the i guess not until like the 60s and 70s when the nfl and nba really got going yeah they started to face any sort of competition. Yeah. But it's a completely different game than football or basketball. I mean, it's the only game where the defense has the ball and there's no clock, and it always goes down to the last strike for it to finish. Yeah. And it's so much longer. It's hard. 
people's attention spans are much less yeah. now, especially kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And baseball is more of a story than it is like a clip that you would watch that's like super entertaining for five yeah. seconds. Mm. One tackle, and one shot, one yeah. whatever. Now there, there's exciting moments like you yeah. know, your walk off home runs and stuff, but it's like it's a chunk of your year. It's not just like one Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. It's it's a completely different experience that I love and fell in love with. And it I'm also a nerd about like old players and my grandfather loved baseball and it kind of connected me with him and it's super nostalgic. But yeah, it's it's I love it because it's different than the other major sports. And I think it gets a bad rap. Mm. But I still think it is wildly successful. You see, like, how much these players get paid. Yeah. I mean, that was something that we talked about. I can't remember who it was I was talking about with, but the the newest deal from the Los Angeles Dodgers guy, uh, it was $700 million, million, 10-year deal. Yep. The wildest part about that deal to me is the same guy who's, like, flaunting that money just bought Chelsea and spent $1 billion last year alone buying players to come play for Chelsea. The owner of the Dodgers? Yeah, he's the one who bought Chelsea, which is London's per, like Premier League soccer he's team, or one spending. of London's. That's insane. And I'm like, he's an American, too. He's not Saudi Arabian. Like, He's an American. So he must have some some other people backing him. Yeah. Yeah, it's a like, company. Yeah, it's like business. back to like business. <laughs> Elon Elon Musk bought Twitter, but he had like a lot of other people pitching in money. Yeah. Just like just so, just cuz it was up for sale. Like you have to there's like a level of like time is part of the commodity or time is part of the value of that. Just yeah. cuz like you have to do it. Yeah. It's wild though. 700 million. Mm-hmm. Andrew, yeah. like I don't understand like like I don't think the Dodgers are going to make 700 million dollars in the next 10 do- years. Well, I mean, like, how much do baseball teams make, dude? The thing is, is if you look at the NFL, the NBA, and the MLB, the popular the NFL is the most the most popular sports league in America. That's fa- I would have guessed NBA because NBA NBA's are so NBA famous. NBA has exploded in like the past yeah. twenty years. They have the most like superstars. Oh yeah, and uh, but as far as which leagues make the most money? The NFL makes the most money, and the MLB makes the second most money because they sell tickets and they sell uh, tickets you know, and they merchandise. Play Sixty-two games. Yeah, and it's a lot more money to be made. That's fair. It's just a longer season with a lot more money to be made with longer TV contracts, stuff like that. But yeah, like there's out of the top five biggest sports contracts ever. The majority of them are baseball players, which is like within America, not not including oh, yeah, international yeah, yeah. soccer. I mean, not like Messi yeah. and Ronaldo. And yeah, those guys. I think that's fascinating too. Like, I think whenever I was a kid, that conversation of like the top four leagues are, are like you're talking about the NHL, MLB, NBA, NFL, and they were like the MLS is going to make it one day. And it's like I don't think I'm at the point now where I don't know if the MLS will ever. Maybe one day it'll become like a top Maybe league in like 30 years. But I genuinely think soccer will become like, I think by the time, that, especially that we're older, I do think soccer will be like just as popular yeah. as any of uh, definitely. Ho- I'd already think it's as popular as hockey. Cause I think like hockey people are hockey people and premier league people are like premier league people. Now, sports. It's just going to continue to make more money. Yeah. People love people, people love freaking it. love it. Yeah. I'm I'm interested to see like if they're going to start playing like they they've talked about playing Champions League games which is like a like all the top uh how do I explain that like all the top teams from every soccer league in Europe play each other in a tournament every year called the Champions League and they've talked about hosting some of those games like games that matter in America because America has like so many fans now yeah and like the club world cup they're going to like vamp that up and start making it like this worldwide thing so like the top four teams from every league in the whole world are going to play in a tournament every four years and they're going to make that like a big deal and they're hosting that in america they're also hosting the literal world cup in america that's wild which is huge and they're hosting the copa america in america which is brazil like the south america's championship so they're they're doing like like there's going to be like a lot of footy 
going on in America in the next few years. So, yeah. Anyways, there's today's segment of Meyer Sports. Yeah, Meyer has been eerily quiet for this. <laughs> Meyer Sports. <laughs> Andrew, we, we went on a tangent. Sorry. I had one question that I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Which is actually, it's another segment that we have. It's called, oh, okay. um, "What are your fashion influences?" <laughs> mm. I kind of knew you'd ask me that. Yes. I am wearing what I wore to work, so. Okay. To be fair, this is kind of what everyone wears to my office. Yeah. My fashion influences. Mm. And that can be brands. That can be people. That can yeah. be stores. We just would love to know where you get your influ- Who influences you? When you're like, or what okay, I need to wear you? clothes. Like, uh, where where do you I find would say inspiration? For, I never even really thought about my the clothes that I wear or like fashion at all. Until probably midway through college. Well, wow. Like, I kind of just wore jeans. Like, I kind of just wore what everyone else wore. Basic tennis shoes and jeans every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say I'm super into fashion, but there are things that, like, I'm like, oh, I really want those pants. And I think the idea behind it all is like a uh, cowboy, mm. if that makes sense. Well, wow. I like the store, two stores that I think follow suit Tacova's great store and Orvis. Mm. I, like, I love those stores. Yeah. I've never shopped at Orvis, but I love Tacova's. Yeah, good stuff. Mm. So I'll deflect the question back to you what influences you why well, talk about fashion a lot yeah. Myers, i want to know i want to know a specific person to give you direction in this i want to know a specific person or two that you that you think influences you the most well you influence me a lot cuz we're mutually interested in similar yeah, I was more so talking about figures. You can you can leave it at me if you want. But I was more so talking about like fig like public I figures. Mm. I don't think I draw much inspiration from particular public figures. I think it tends really? to be from like cultures and from my friends. Okay. Like you and Tucker, I think are two friends that I I like your fashion. Mm. And then Thank you. like cities or places like Scandinavia and yeah. countries is there an Mark. era from history that you think had better fashion than people now? Oh, that's a good question. I really like it uh, seems well, like okay, the 90s here's a are person. Back. Yeah, here's a person. So, pretty much my whole time in <laughs> college, oh, man. I would watch a Seinfeld episode and I would <laughs> and try straight up copy wear that. Jerry Seinfeld's <laughs> outfit like you know the what? next I, day. I love he has some fire. He does. He, does. he also rocks. I think the thing of this, he rocks Jordans. Yeah. In like a really casual way. And I'm kind of into it right yeah. now. Like I kind of want to get a pair of like Jordans just because Jordans are like, you know, Jordans like a brand that's like bigger than itself. It's yeah. like it stands for something. It's not just yeah. a shoe. I kind of want to get a pair of Jordans only because I like respect the heck out of Jordan. You know, yeah. I'm not a basketball guy. Yeah. I don't like, you know, I don't, I, I like but Michael Jordan. You identify with the brand. That's yeah, but I'm like, yeah. behind all I kind of them. want the, the yeah. vibe, you know? I think, um, yeah, 90s, definitely heavy influence on me. I'm also kind of in a moment of redefining what I want to communicate to other people in the clothes that I wear. Because mm-hmm. I, okay. I do, I am, I'm an adult. I do work a job in insurance. So there is like a level of professionalism that I want to have. Yeah. What do you wear to work usually? I wore this today. I tend to have... Um, some sort of a collar or yeah. a, a mock neck or a, a like a turtleneck kind of thing going on um, with like a skate shoe or a sneaker because this this is comfy to me mm-hmm. um, and it's what I I feel like I'm in I am myself if I'm wearing some kind of a skate shoe or a sneaker um, and I I do find that like sometimes, you know, our insurance agency focuses mostly on churches. And so I'm interacting with pastors and a lot of times these pastors will be wearing full suits if I go to interact with them. And so I do want to be like 
respectful of them and not just wear some kind of graphic tee because I think it looks cool, but I want to have a level of professionalism. Yeah. But I don't want to feel that pressure from the man, you know? Like yeah. That's, that's ambiguous. And honestly, business is a lot more casual now than I think it ever has been. And so there is freedom and I feel the freedom to dress as I please. And so sometimes I do just wear a white t-shirt to work, yeah. but whatever I'm wearing to me is respectable and, and respectful to my surroundings. So. Hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. That's, that's kind of how I, I feel. I, I'm, I think that, I don't know, the arrows question really threw me off there. I'm really curious, like, like, I, man. It's interesting so for many guys different ways. so many guys, it's something they think about because they wake up every day and put clothes on. Yeah. yeah. But not something, at least for my friends, we don't ever talk about it. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about it because. It'll be like, oh, those boots are awesome yeah because like at samford where we all went to school together there is like a there's a thrift culture and like a fashion culture that kind of permeates and it's funny that i watch people like start to get into it who weren't into it before and they start to like get the cool shoes or get the hat or get the whatever and then i see it kind of mesh with their old clothes and then they wear like some bad outfits until Mm -hmm. they eventually figure out how to like be their own Bring it all self, together. you know. Yeah, I was that way, and yeah, same. I think I think that's just part of it. It's part of experimenting, but I think it's. I wanted to ask you about it because you never. That's seem, fascinating. Seem to get into the thrift thing. You like and your people. You and your buddies like are really well dressed. Yeah, it's not like, that you dress badly. I didn't want to communicate that. No, I no. I wanted to communicate you didn't delve into like the thrift thing and like the tatter tattered torn up NASCAR t-shirt thing. You sure. Know? Like you never yeah. went down that road. I would say after college, so much of college was just you wear a t-shirt and sweatpants every day and then if you have to dress up for a function or something you wear a suit. Sure. Yeah. It's like you never had to really do anything besides wear something super nice and then wear random clothes. Yeah. Yeah. But after college. Except for that one business class where they're like, you have to dress professional to business 200. <laughs> yeah. And I would just still wear a suit probably. Yeah. Mm. And, but then after college, you feel more like an adult, especially like a year after college. Sure. You're, you're going out to places, you're meeting people. For the first time, at least for me, it's you think about what you're going to wear just to go out somewhere. Yeah. And yeah, you kind of have to develop your style. Mm. You know? And yeah, it's the first time in my life I've sort of tried to do that. Yeah. That's actually, that's, that's. And then you got to wear, I wear, you know, a collared shirt to work every day. Mm. Um, but yeah. So what do you think when you see guys who, put effort into dressing but they don't dress like uh, um uh business casual whatever you call like when you see guys like like myself or other people around birmingham who are putting effort into what they're wearing but they're dressing like i don't know i don't know what you would call me but yeah like that it's cool i think I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's they took the time to develop their style. I mean, and not a lot of guys do. I think I notice more when a guy is wearing something <laughs> dumb, like he's wearing a a flannel and suit pants, yeah, like blue <laughs> trousers, yeah. Oh man, um, but like trying to look business professional, like yeah. Colors, that's what I noticed the most. Is It's not I'm even the like way. style, really, but good colors. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's the most important thing. I think that's the same thing. Like, literally, uh, I was at Home Depot on Sunday. <laughs> I hate to flex, but I was at Home Depot on Yo, Sunday. Home Depot flex. And there was a dude walking in. He was an old guy. And I, I'm not kidding. This was his outfit. Um, Like, T-shirt. Like short sleeve T-shirt, red Tommy Hilfiger like sleeveless 
like vest that was red. So his gray t-shirt, red uh, vest, uh, like turquoise bathing suit, Oof. white tube socks, and loafers, mm. like penny loafers, not like house loafers, like penny loafers. Mm. And I was just like, I that's that's actually that's insane. Like that some that he like put on like he knew he was wearing a red vest and he put on turquoise shorts. I think the colors conversation is really interesting because I think sometimes I wear two of like a really similar shade color. Yeah. Like I think in one of our previous episodes I was wearing like a navy mock neck with a navy sweater over it and I think I feel the most like I know what I'm doing in fashion mm-hmm. when I can wear something that it's like the same color, but it's a slightly different shade and mm-hmm. I know it still works together. Mm. That is when I think I feel the most like big brain, big head fashion. <laughs> I know how to like put together something, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. And I, to answer your question even more, I think most guys, like just the basic guy mm. is going to, doesn't want to have to think about their style. Yeah. So they just pick a brand that they identify with and just go with yeah. that wow. for yeah. the rest of their life. Um, which I do do that. There are brands that I love. Mm-hmm. But eventually you get to a point where, and nothing against older people, we all have great dads and granddads, but you get to a point, you don't want to look like your dad or granddad yeah, what they're wearing now because you're like I'm me. I'm young. I need to yeah you know, do something different. Yeah, there's a lot of merit in that. I think because there's so many decisions that people have to make throughout the day, you yeah, know, throughout their lives. And there's a lot of merit I think in just like clothes are not a decision that you want to make. Yeah, that and I think decision, guys, especially if you get married, you kind of just your wife buys you clothes every Christmas and you just wear them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, to a certain extent. Like, I mean, I wear a white t-shirt and black jeans like almost every single day of my life. Yeah. But like the only things that I have, like besides that, like an, I'm a white t-shirt, like I'm yeah. fiend. Like I, I, I want to find the perfect white t-shirt. I'm still in pursuit of that. Yeah. But on, on top of that, it's like, like Gracie and Gracie's mom, because Gracie tells her mom what to get me, get me like sweaters and sweatshirts and, and whatever. And that's what I wear. Like yeah. on top of my clothes or on top of my, my uniform, my yeah. norm core uniform, as yeah. they call it. But it is, it is a fascinating thing. It is. Fashion. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Anytime. Hey, man. Andrew Sink, this is a good time. This is a good time having you on the, on the pod. Sink, you're, you're a friend of the pod, and, and we're happy about that. And I just want to let you know. And having you on... It's just a, it's a good thing, man. I'm honored to be here. Yeah. Man. I mean, let's do a little recap. What did we talk about today? We talked, we talked about our upbringings a little we bit. Did. Mountain Brook, this part. Alabama. We talked about business for so long. Yeah, we yeah. did. That was fun. We talked about business for a long time. Sports. Myers was fascinated. So interested. Wow. Um, and fashion. And fashion. Some good Mountain stories. Brook. Sports, business, fashion. Yeah. That's what we should call our podcast now. Word of mouth, psych, Mountain Brook Sports, fashion, business. We Honestly, we get some we get some listeners, I bet. We, we never talked comedy. Maybe Dang it. Time. Hey, there's always next time. Hey, that's right. Hey, once you're on as a guest, you can be on as a host. So, oh, wow. You have to come host. You have to come if, host. If, if you hosted with Myers, who would you want your first guest to be? That's such a good I was about to say someone. Anyone in the world, or do we have to know him? What? Do we have to know him? No. Oh, actually, sorry. Yes, it has to be someone. It, it has to be someone we could literally get on. Yeah. They have to be a good conversationalist mm. to some extent. Mm. Sure. I'll think about it, and when I figure it out, <laughs> we're gonna bring him on. I was gonna yeah. joke that we should bring Will Simmons. Oh, <laughs> that'd be great. Simmons would be. Simmons would be. It'd be awesome really to have funny. on a podcast. Be, yeah, you should have him. He would. I think he would smile a lot. Yeah. Will Green would be good too. Oh my gosh, that would be a chaotic. That would be a podcast. Mad. It would have to be. It could. It could maybe just be like you and Will, 
or just me and Will. Like, we, like we, we, I don't think it might be too much to have three people on with Will Green. Yeah, Will would make it absolute chaos. Yeah. Genuinely, it would be his goal. Anyways, hey, thanks for coming on. This is a great time. Absolutely, talked about so many good things, and we got to talk to you about them. Gosh, that's what matters. So, I'm word flattered. of mouth episode five. Crazy. Wom. Adios. Wom. Wom. Welcome to the secret segment of the secret, podcast secret, secret, where we secret, talk about secret, secret, secret things secret, on the secret, 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 secret segment. Secret. All right, today on our secret segment, I have the top three most addictive snacks. And I would love to hear y'all's thoughts. Addictive as in most the most just because they can't stop eating them. Nerds, clusters. No, oh well, I, I think that definitely is part of it, oh, but a part of it is, like, bag. with the science. Mm. Like, Oh, I have my guess for number one. What? Oreos. Whoa. No. I said nerds, clusters. It's definitely not that, but that has been, like, a really common thing amongst people of our age recently. I'm not going to lie to you. Nerds, clusters, nor Oreos are on this list. Cheetos? Cheetos are number four. Mm. Number three Reese's Cups That mm. is number two Snickers Isn't that crazy Peanut butter cups are number two Yeah Snickers are not Delicious. on it Number three Is Oh All right, We're gonna go with this song now Okay um, Number three Cookies Chocolate chip cookies Just Cookies Sorry chocolate okay. chip cookies we're going more general. Like apparently yeah, those are yeah, like peanut butter cups number two. So like this is specifically talking about like oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Nestle or like Toll House. Yeah. Or sorry. Potato yeah. chips. Is the same thing? Nestle or like Pillsbury. Potato chips are number ten. Ten. Yeah. Dude. So it's Andrew, have you cookies. ever seen Steven eat chocolate chip cookies? No. <laughs> He'll make like a tray of those like little what are they? Nestle ones? Nestle's the best in my opinion. The they're yellow ones. The ones. like small ones and No no no, just chocolate chip cookies. Oh, okay. He will eat them like chips. I will. I it's like legitimately like, could I could down 10 to 15 chocolate chip cookies with these. I can too. It's like, those are like, I genuinely think like, whatever the yellow in, I think it's Nestle. Nestle yeah. chocolate chip cookies, like little squares. House. Wait, that's literally the, like, like, honestly, death row meal, I might just get a freaking hot plate of those. I thought the same thing, just a dozen donuts, Krispy Kreme, I might eat that. Yeah, that'd be tasty. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. matter at that point. I'd rather go sure out with a headache. Mm. You know? Yeah. Doesn't matter if you have a headache. Yeah, you're gonna die. So. You ever think about how gluttony is just like overlooked completely? Yeah, I've yeah. never, I never really thought about that till yeah, the other day. Like, like but they still don't drink and then gorge themselves. Yeah, yeah. or like ah, uh, tough day, and they'll eat a bunch of ice cream, but then they're yeah. like, oh, I'm on time though. That's like, all right, well, mm. cheat days. Now, why is that a thing? I don't know. All right, number one, Sour Patch Kids. Wow, most we addictive snacks. I could have gotten there. I think. I don't really like Sour Patch Kids, so I don't get it. But yeah, that's what this my is. My candies of choice are like Nerds Clusters and Sour Patch Kids, probably. Cracker Jacks are number five. Speaking of baseball, I this, don't this know if I've ever 40s? had a Cracker Jack. Oh, Cracker Jacks are freaking good. No, it's new. Uh, Dur- Nacho Cheese Doritos, number six. I feel like y'all could have guessed that one. Yeah. Yeah. Cheese Puffs, number seven. Oh, I yeah. also think y'all could have guessed. I can't stop eating those. It once, once you eat your first, it's hard to stop mm-hmm. with Cheese Puffs. Uh, number eight, popcorn. Like like movie yeah. popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that stuff is freaking... Uh, and number nine is just chocolate mm. in Makes general. Sense. I feel like I that's kind it. of... Mi- is it Mr. Beast chocolate? Uh, Beast- <laughs> what are they Be- called? Feastables. <laughs> Feastables. I- no? No, it's... Fe- it's oh, top ten banned yeah. snacks. Here's a fun... Like, ban- like wait, Flamin' Hot Cheetos. M&Ms. Those are not banned. Kinder Eggs, again, not banned. Not you can banned. get that. Banned uh, number eight, oh, chocolate oh. milk. What banned, does this mean? Banned meaning like not allowed, not like you're playing music in a band. Because yeah. I was thinking of band, like you're playing music in a band. I was like backstage, you want like, M&Ms before the show? I sort of thought that. but then I Oh, was it like, has been unceremoniously banned in various locations. Mm. Nothing's banned in the U.S. I was going to say. Yeah. So maybe this is like other countries or something. In Italy, tons of stuff is banned. Yeah. French fries, number seven. They didn't have. I might be wrong with this. I don't think that French fries when I went to Israel at McDonald's. They had a ton of McDonald's. Mm. Yeah, 
They show that is one different. of the most the most fun one of the most fun things to do when you travel abroad is to go to the store and buy funny looking snacks. Just try them. Well, mukbang, <laughs> soda, pizza. That's not true. And popcorn. Yeah, That's, pizza's banned. Yeah, this is not in this I like, this I like is a, top five questions like that. This is Listverse. Great website. I think we should have a segment called Lists. Yeah. Listing I have a list up. For you. What? Well, a top two list. Okay, come on. Can you name the top two land owning entities on planet Earth? What? Well, can you give me an example of a land owning entity? Alabama Power. <laughs> so, sure. That would be a group that owns land. So, it's not like the United States of America. So, the United States government actually, the federal government doesn't own that much land. Probably yeah. 28. Um, I actually do know this. China. No, what, what in China? Like the China, Chinese the government Republic owns of the, a ton China. of land. It's People's actually Republic? not in the top two. It's probably mm. up there. Wow. Um, is Can I ask, is one of them a country? Neither of them are a country. Mm. Okay, he paused. That makes me wonder. One of them is not really a government, but a very powerful Ruling. I was gonna say, um, what's the uh, the public Russian, interest fund? Russian dude. Nope. It's not the PIF. The, nope. They must just not own land. It's not a government. What is uh, what is <laughs> the ruler of Russia's name? Putin. Putin. It's not him. Really? Russia's huge. Oh, uh, Warren Buffett. So is it like? Is that what you're talking about? Nope. No. Is it, is it a figure like that or is it organization? One of the number one is their figures. Uh, oh, the, the Rothschilds. Saudis? No, but you're getting a little warmer. Uh, Vanderbilts. No. Um, uh, Rockefellers. No, nope, you're on the right track, but you're going... Who am I... Who am I missing? Rothschilds? They're way more powerful. Kennedys? No. Who else is more powerful than them? Like, they were almost... Wait. <laughs> they were a ruling family. Oh, the royal family. The British royal family yeah. is the number one owner of land. Interesting. Any entity in the world mm. with almost one sixth of the habitable land. Wow. Because of the British Empire yeah. colonized like everything, and there's a lot of land that technically the British royal family owns. Mm. Wow. And number two is the Catholic Church. Oh, wow. frick. I should have known that. Because every single Catholic Church, Catholic school... They own the land. They own it. The Vatican owns Dang. the building and the land. Wow. Same with the Church of Christ. So And the, and and the Methodist Church. Uh, the Catholic Church is the number one owner of real estate. Wow. In the world. Huh. It's crazy. Hey, gift that keeps on know. giving. I wonder where, the, wonder where the Catholic Church gets all their money from. Like where I've do they? Been to the Vatican and it is unbelievable. No one really knows how much money they have. But yeah, they're like one of the richest organizations. But I feel like I don't know. There she is. Hey, Gracie. Gracie's home from work. My wife. All right, guys. Well, that's the end of the secret segment, and that's that means it's the end of our podcast. Yep. So this podcast like is over now. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. It's all ogre now. It's all over now. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the secret segment. This is the end of the podcast.